Welcome to Sweet Existence, a card game based off of Nathan W. Pyle's Strange Planet series. You might have seen Strange Planet roaming across the internet. I know I have. People have been sharing out these interesting aliens that are uh, attempting to function as earthlings, but they don't exactly grasp the concept. And in this game here, you're going to be getting these things called existence squares, which are basically your lives. One of them may be a parish, which can remove you from the game. Your objective in the game is to collect sweet discs, discs that are sweet or cookies for you earthlings out there. And it, basically whoever has the most of these by the end of the game is the winner. Players are going to be drawing these cards here, these action squares, and playing them. They might manipulate the different existence squares around on the board moving them along to other players they might be able to steal sweet discs from other players and other various actions and the game is very simple you'll be drawing them and playing them and basically taking turns until a parish square has been revealed when a parish square gets revealed that will trigger the ending of the game the person who perished has well perished and is out of the game and the rest of the players will count up their sweet discs and whoever has the most will have the sweetest existence pretty interesting little party game based on a web series very popular web series i'll take I'll show you down below what it looks like, how it plays, and then we'll come up and discuss my review for the game Sweet Existence. Here we have a four player game of Sweet Existence, and to set up the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to basically be giving every player three existence squares. It will tell you, based on the number of players, how many existence squares there will be, as well as how many parishes you will use. Generally speaking, it will be one or it will be two. And in a four player game, we're going to be using one, ex one existence square that has the parish marker on it. You're going to then deal out these 12 different ones to all players, giving everybody three. Then you'll also be taking these connections squares, shuffling them up and dealing out one for every player. These are going to basically be the faction that these wonderful little aliens are participating on. Uh, there are three different factions, and it's going to be random as to whose team you're going to be on to start the game. Once you get one of each of these, you won't need any of the other ones. You'll take those away, as well as, of course, the existence squares that are left over in the game. Then you're going to give every single player six of these little sweet discs, and the rest of them you will not need, because in this game you're basically trying to gather sweet discs from the other beings. And the way this game works is pretty simple. You're going to, first of all, draw an action square, and then you're going to play that action square. Now, every player is actually going to be able to take their uh, existence squares at the beginning of the game, take a look at them, and then put them face down. And the only one they, they actually need to worry about is the parish square. If they happen to see this one, they know that if this gets revealed when it's on their side of the field, they're going to be removed from the game, and the game will trigger the ending, which means no matter how many sweet discs they have, they cannot win the game. So let's go ahead and get rid of this, because that is how the game is going to end. Well, to start off, we'll do draw one of these guys here, and if it's one of these purple ones, all you're going to do is give it to a player. Generally speaking, they're going to have a little web comic on them. They'll say something funny, something interesting, and you'll place it next to a player. If a player ever gets two of these little purple cards here, they're going to have to discard these guys, and then they're going to go ahead and flip over any of their existence squares. When they flip over one, if it's a parish, the game ends. If not, Every player on that player's team, including that player, will get to steal a sweet disc from another player. I enjoy tender narratives. So both of these players enjoy tender narratives. They can both steal a sweet disc from any player of their choosing. And that's pretty much how the game goes. Now, on a player's turn, when they draw one of these guys, it's usually going to be one of these cards here, the purple ones. However, there are going to be pink ones, which will let you do an interesting action, expose one of your existence squares. In which case, you'll have to play this and expose an existence square, which will allow you to steal sweet discs from other players. That's how you win the game, is gathering enough. But you have to be careful, because some of these cards in here are going to basically make you have to switch your existence squares up, reveal them, and do certain things you may or may not want to do. Gift a sweet disc to any other being. Oh, how sweet. Uh, expose one of your existence squares. Exchange connection squares with a being that you're not connected to. So in the game, you're basically also going to be switching teammates. Sometimes you might be on the same team, other times you may not be, and sometimes you might lose a teammate by actually their existence square, or their, sorry, their connection square being removed from the game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. On your turn, draw a card, play it if it's pink, and perform the action, and then if it's purple, you're going to give it to a player. 
if that player gets two, they'll reveal an existence square. And if uh, they reveal an existence square, then they're going to steal sweet discs. If you ever have three existence squares face up, you can't be given any of these specific purple cards anymore. And the moment that you have the parish square pop up, that player is eliminated from the game. Everybody calculates these sweet little discs here, and whoever has the most is the winner in sweet existence. So let's discuss the game, what I think about it, and whether you should pick up this game. <laughs> the Strange Planet series is a lot of fun, first of all, for those of you who like Strange Planet. If you're a fan of the uh, web series, you are going to like this game. It's probably something I would recommend picking up because it gives you a ton, and I mean a ton, of the different little comics here that you can read. Uh, Mutual Limb Enclosure. <laughs> this bolsters my spirits, and they're basically hugging. Uh, you got Pardon My Device Doesn't Cost As Much As This New One. I Would Like To Upgrade. Exchange Connection Squares With A Being That You're Not Connected To. And so it adds the element of us earthlings, right, and what we go through on a day-to-day -day life, our day-to-day -day lives, and how we make things that are very, very simple, uh, much more complex. And then it also provides a humorous light on mundane, everyday tasks. Like, for instance, I don't know, lower, low detail rendering. We will attach it to the place of highest honor. And then it's literally just you sticking up a child's drawing on your refrigerator. Uh, the web series is a lot of fun. It's really cute. I went through and read all of these after playing a few of the few times of the game, and uh, I, I I had a good time doing so. I think it'll also be fun too when players are drawing these cards and playing them because they're very simple as to how the game functions. You're going to get a laugh every time you play the card. And we actually noticed during our lives when we played the game, players would actually read the card out loud as they played it, which is not part of the game. But I just did it because well, it's it's fun. Uh, Let's talk about the game now. So in the game, you're basically trying to stay on a team uh, with as many people as you possibly can, because whenever a teammate reveals an existence square, or you do, you can steal cookies sweet discs. And you're basically going to be trying to gather as many as you possibly can. Some actions will let you steal a few from other players. Some will let you steal all of them from another player at a huge cost. And there's a wide variety you can get these sweet discs, but you're never going to get from the pile. It's always from other players. And how you choose is going to make a big difference as to gathering these discs. Now, Another thing to note too is if you gather too many discs, the players are going to try and find the parish uh, tile here, this existence square, and place it in front of you if they possibly can, and then make you reveal it, which means you'll be out of the game. So you have to skirt the lines of knowing A, where the uh, parish item is, as well as how many cookies you have. If you get too many, you might get removed, uh, or if you're smart enough to realize who has it before you get it, make them reveal it when you have the most uh, sweet discs, then you will win the game. Uh, it's it's got a little bit of deductive reasoning. It's got a little bit of logic to it. It's also got that team element that can kind of switch around. I guess like games like Resistance and whatnot that have these like teams, but they're not set teams. They can switch. You can be on nobody's team. The game itself is literally just drawing a card and playing it. There's a lot of luck involved in this game. You don't know what you're going to get, but I would say that uh, in general, you're either going to be getting something that allows you to move the existence squares around, something that messes with your team element, or of course, taking these sweet discs. Uh, the other option is forcing players to reveal their existence squares, which eventually will end the game because somebody is going to have to trigger the end of the game with that parish in front of them, regardless of the, if they want to or not. And because these little discs, these little cards are face down in front of you, uh, you're not going to remember where they go as they move around the board. You might have a good idea of where the parish is at one point in the game, but it might switch around to the point where you've kind of lost track. Uh, when I was playing the game multiple times, I thought I knew where it was, I thought I knew where it was going, and then I actually ended up not knowing where it was going, and I had to kind of backtrack and, and assume where I, it might have went based on what players play. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much how the game goes. It's got this luck element, this team-based element, and it's also got uh, the uh, like memory element of where you're moving the little existence squares around. I really, really enjoyed that. It's a lot of fun. We played it quite a bit on our live stream, and uh, Callie really enjoyed the game. Uh, a couple little things with the game. When you reveal an existence square, everybody that is on your team, including yourself, will get to steal a sweet disc from somebody else. Because you don't know, I don't know how the, what the order is in the rules, who takes what and when. Um, if I take something from her and she takes something from him and he takes something from him, technically every only person who's actually going to get anything is going to be the guy all the way on the right hand side. So based on when a player chooses to take a disc, 
he or she may not actually end up getting anything. Uh, the other way of doing it, which is the way I've kind of selected to do it, is everybody closes their eyes, it's on the team that, that revealed this square, and then three, two, one, and they point. And that seems to go over or over better. So I, I think that would probably be a better way to do, the, do, do it as opposed to doing it in turn order or in a random order, because otherwise at some point, somebody's going to get screwed over. <laughs> um, that's pretty much my only complaint about the game. I think it's better played with more players, which is why it's a four player or more game. Having more players is going to add that extra element. There's an extra parish that's going to be involved and there's going to be more people who may or may not be on your team. When you're playing four players, you might get nobody on your team and all three of the other players might be on, a sim on the same team, or you might get um, four different teams, or you might get uh, two and two. And in, in general, certain elements work really well, and others do not work as well. Three versus the one. But yes, there are action squares that will change the team element up, which is great when they arrive, but that might be too late as other players might have started collecting all those sweet discs before you could get a chance. Uh, there are some bomb cards in there, and I mean bomb like amazing cards that you'll draw that can steal all of this person's sweet discs at a high cost, but that makes you a huge target as well, which I think is really nice about the game. Artwork is solid, the gameplay works uh, the only couple of little elements that I would suggest to change to the comic series is fun and refreshing to read and it's a game that I could easily see a uh, family's playing gateway style game with a couple unique mechanics that I don't usually see in these type of games if you're interested in picking up the game sweet existence uh, by with Nathan W Pyle's strange planet you can go ahead and take a look down below link in the description if it's a game for you personally I had a little uh, I had <laughs> a lot of fun with this game and if you'd like go ahead and take a look look link down below thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this game link down below in the description and if you like this video hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button and go ahead and comment below whether you think this game is for you or not also if you wouldn't mind check out our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter list top five lists and our christmas gift guide all kinds of stuff like that throughout the entire year that you can take a look at which are going to be similar reviews and different reviews for different games that we do not show here on our YouTube. You can also go ahead and check our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We played games just like this one. In fact, we did play this one. And you can check out our Patreon and or Discord. We do giveaways, charity, live auctions, all kinds of good stuff on both of those platforms. And if you're interested in participating, we would love to have you. Thank you so much, patrons. Really appreciate it. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next Strange Planet.